These days, there's a lot of military flying going on around Ukraine. Since the start of Putin's war, flight tracking data from NATO aircraft can be found all over the internet. Almost every day, you see NATO reconnaissance planes, signals intelligence aircraft, remotely piloted vehicles, AWACS radar controllers, aerial refueling planes, cargo jets, fighters, and even helicopters. They're broadcasting their position because NATO wants everyone to know where they're flying. NATO's not involved in the war, at least not directly. With a flick of the switch, however, they could disappear off the radar in an instant. If you look across the borders into Ukraine, right now the Russians are bombing Mariupol. Their helicopters are rocketing towns and villages. Ukrainian Bayraktar drones are hitting Russian tanks. But none of those planes want to be seen. The switch is turned off and the map shows absolutely nothing. However, sometimes what you can see is more interesting than what you can't. A few weeks ago, U.S. Air Force B-52 Stratofortress strategic bombers started flying missions over Romania, Poland, and the Baltic Sea. Those are strategic bombers, the kind that can carry nuclear weapons. Of course, most probably, they weren't carrying that. But you never know. Bucharest is just a short flight away from Crimea and the Donbass region in Ukraine. Those bombers are well within range of all of Russia's forces that are fighting in the war. Of course, NATO's not in the war. This isn't World War III. Still, that's a pretty big asset to be flying not that far from a war zone. Meanwhile, the Russians are using their own strategic bombers, the Tu-22M Backfire Bomber, which is their equivalent of America's B-1B Lancer. Unlike the B-52s, however, the Russian planes aren't broadcasting their position. You don't see the flight paths on public data streams. So you have to ask yourself, why would America's B-52s be broadcasting their position? The answer is, every flight is a personal message directly to Vladimir Putin. In recent weeks, Russia threatened the first use of tactical nuclear weapons in the war. That's interpreted as Russia saying it's ready to turn Kiev, Lviv, or Odessa into a modern-day Hiroshima. Predictably, Western diplomats responded with promises of potential consequences, and they called for negotiations to end the war. To Vladimir Putin, that sounds like weakness, so he ignores them. However, he can't ignore a B-52. That plane carries a kind of speak softly but carry a big stick message. Still, some may say it's only a single B-52. But actually, we don't know that. It might have been two. Or four. Only the lead plane in a formation reports its position. Most probably, however, it really was just one. You don't need that many B-52s to send a message. B-52 bombers aren't just modernized, faster jet versions of the planes we know from old movies. They're a thousand times more powerful. They can even carry nuclear weapons. The common understanding of what a single B-52 can do is wrong. To destroy a city, a B-52 doesn't even fly overhead anymore to drop a bomb. Today, they carry cruise missiles, and not just one either. A single B-52 can carry 20 cruise missiles, 8 in the bomb bay, and 12 more on the wings. Those cruise missiles can be tipped with what are called tactical nuclear warheads, which are much smaller than so-called strategic weapons. In fact, hundreds of times smaller. But how small is small? It turns out each tactical nuclear warhead potentially has an explosive yield three to four times larger than the atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. In other words, what was once viewed as a strategic weapon a city vaporizing nuclear bomb is now described as merely tactical. A B-52 can fire those cruise missiles for more than 1,500 miles away. While orbiting over Bucharest, they could hit Moscow, or anything in the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, or beyond, all the way to Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan. Of course, none of those B-52s have been firing any missiles. 
Each time, they orbit for a few hours, then turn northwest and fly back to land in England. Those are quiet missions. Nothing is said. Nothing is written either. For all we know, the pilots could be logging them as training exercises. And don't think for a moment that the Russians don't have weapons that are similar. Or maybe even better. In the midst of Putin's hot war in Ukraine, a new Cold War has started. If Putin uses nuclear weapons on Kiev, up to 20 Russian cities could disappear. Those flights are what is called bomber diplomacy, and sadly, it's the only language that Vladimir Putin seems to understand. How do you even stop a war like that once it begins? That's the problem. Deterrence has limits. We assume that the actors will be rational, and yet it was obviously irrational for Vladimir Putin to have invaded Ukraine in the first place. Before anyone starts talking about U.S. aggression, bear in mind that the Russians have started a hot war in Ukraine. There's no comparison. They're flying Tu-22 backfire strategic bombers to carpet bomb Ukrainian cities. Every flight, every day, could be carrying a nuclear bomb. Likewise, the Russians regularly fire cruise missiles all across Ukraine. Any of those could be carrying a nuclear weapon as well. Putin has ordered the targeting of civilians. More than 95% of the city of Mariupol is already in ruins. Tens of thousands of civilians have died. Across all of Ukraine, up to 30% of the infrastructure has been destroyed. For Putin, this is an all-out war. Meanwhile in the West, we just want it to end. Those B-52s may be the only thing keeping the war from spreading across the rest of Europe. While Vladimir Putin seems hell-bent on writing his name into Russian history, it's important to remember that history only matters if there's someone left alive to tell it. Nobody wants World War III. Nobody can win a nuclear war. Nobody can survive a nuclear winter. If bomber diplomacy is the only kind of diplomacy that works, let's give it a try. I'm Thomas Van Hare, and this is Historic Wings. Please subscribe and consider sponsoring us. And remember, there's always more to the story.